welcome to Incoming, the vidcast that takes a look back at the week's historical miniature releases. This is episode 14, which reviews the releases for week ending the 7th of August 2009. And as always, I'm your host, Neil Shook. A very warm welcome to the show. I think for the first time you have an unusual show in that every miniature featured in this show happens to be 28mm. No, this isn't a conspiracy, it just happens to be the way it's panned out this week. Okay, so we do have a top 10 for you. So, let's go on with the rest of the show. And number 10, we have, I think, what can only be described as an unusual subject. Tiger Miniatures have been producing some great stuff for their Colonial Wars range. And here we have a couple of packs of Skari on mules, uh, along with a Colonial Officer. As I said, an unusual subject, but a sure one that fans of Colonial Wars will find of great interest. Good stuff from Tiger. And number 9, we have the first of three entries in this week's charts from Wargames Factory. Now, Wargames Factory announced this week that they're starting to produce some metal miniatures to go alongside their plastics range. This is the first of their offerings this week. It's a figure of Julius Caesar, sculpted by Steve Seller, who you may recall was featured on the show a couple of three weeks ago with his re-release of Greek Hoplites from Gorgon. A pretty nice figure this, although it does appear that he's wielding a broadsword as opposed to a gladius. Tony Reedy came out with a comment to me to say that uh, it really doesn't look that big in real life. And though I do like this figure, it does highlight one of the issues when you're mixing and matching metals and plastics, even from the same range of figures. You know, plastics by their very nature can be a lot more delicate than their metal equivalents. Since plastic isn't limited by the sculpting constraints that metal is. So it will be interesting to see how this figure matches up against their Roman legionaries, for example. All that said, I do really like this figure. Number eight, another company with three entries in this week's chart. And the subject matter just shows you just how competitive this week's chart is. Now, the first previews of a couple of this pack uh, happened to be in the charts a few weeks ago. But this is a pack of Panzergrenadiers Ideas from Bolt Action Miniatures. And they've taken an unusual step in releasing a half track complete with a crew in the process of dismounting. Now, it's a great subject, a really nice looking vehicle. It's a well sculpted minis. But I must admit, I think its gaming applications are somewhat limited. Obviously, as this is almost more like a, a diorama as opposed to an actual wargaming piece. Especially when at least half the pack are in the process of dismantling off the half track. So I expect to see these features as vignettes in upcoming World War II games on the show circuit. But I think its actual gaming application is possibly a little limited. Back to Wargames Factory at number 7. And this is the other metal character figure they've released this week. This is a German tribal leader. Again sculpted by Steve Seller. And whilst again this does suffer a little bit from oversized weapon syndrome, it doesn't seem as pronounced as on the Julius Caesar model. And I must admit, I just prefer the different dynamic pose of this model. But by the look of things, this will actually fit in really well with their current release of Germans. Number 6, the second Warlord release. And... This was a figure that they previewed on their site a few weeks ago, and it's just gone into their new releases. This is Prince Rupert of the Rhine from their Pike and Shot range. A fantastically sculpted and posed character figure. It's really nice to have these generals on dynamically posed horses. As a character figure, this really does look the business. But for me, this whole the set is actually let down by the dog. <laughs> I know it sounds almost petty, but I really don't like the dog. Otherwise, this may have been higher this week. Coming in at number five is a figure that I saw at the start of the week that got me really excited. Just goes to show the competition this week and the fact this is only down at number five because I love these. And I'm not going to be out to the end of the month, but these are the new Vikings from Wargames Factory. While following hot on the heels of their ancient Germans, but these Vikings, I think, look absolutely fantastic. There are only a couple of pictures available of them on the web at the moment. But what I've seen, I have been really impressed with. I think these are the best yet from Wargames Factory, as far as their plastic range are concerned. Really great stuff here, and I can't wait to see more of these in the coming weeks. Number four, uh, a complete change in style and period. As we move on towards artisan designs, these are some Arab Irregular Cavalry and some Sharifan Infantry to go with their World War I Lawrence range that they've been producing. I think the thing that caught my eye on these were the dynamic poses of the Arab cavalry. 
And just the general look and feel, I think these look absolutely fantastic. Wasn't aware of this range at all from Artisan. So a uh, really nice surprise to see some great Arab figures. They've got lots of other packs which have already been released. So I think these are well worth checking out. Again, good stuff from Artisan Designs. At number three, we have a continuation of a new range from it's a bit one of my favourite sculptors, Mark Copplestone. These are new packs from his Glory of the Sun range, which revolves around the armies and enemies of Louis XIV. And here we have some French and Dutch sergeants, followed by three packs of Dutch infantry. We have two packs of musketeers, followed by a pack of Dutch pike. As I said, a huge fan of Mark Copplestone. I just love his elegant and clean sculpting style. Yeah, the figures are well detailed, but it still leaves really nice areas for the paint to flow into. You know, they're some of my favourite figures to paint, cobblestones. And whilst this is certainly uh, an unusual period for gaming, uh, I, I don't think you can go far wrong by uh, by some of Mark's figures. I think these just look great. Number two, we have more plastics, and this time from the Perrys. Yes, and usually we have a Perry's release, which is not number one. These are the first previews of their French Heavy Cavalry pack that is due to come out soon. And here we see the two variations that they are producing. We have Carabiners and also Cuirassier. Not much more to be said, really. I mean, you know, Perry's Napoleonic Cavalry. Absolutely glorious stuff. If these sort of models don't get your wargaming juices going, then I don't think much will. <laughs> Also interesting to note the casualty figures in these particular shots. Again, these look plastic, uh, something we haven't seen yet. And obviously, as seen in the pictures, they mentioned that they haven't tooled the command figures for each of these yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing them as well. I think they're going to be something special. So with the Perry's at number two, what on earth can be at number one? Well, it's back to World War Games. Another figure they previewed a few weeks ago and have finally released... This is another character figure for their pike and shot. This is the Earl of Essex in full heavy cavalry regalia. Why is this my number one? It's one of those weeks where it's hard to put your finger on it, but I just really like the pose, uh, the sculpting quality, just the overall aura that this figure projects. I think this figure would make a great centre point for anyone's Civil War army. Uh, at the risk of repeating myself this week, I just think it's a fantastic looking figure. Really impressed with this. So there you have it, my top 10 for this week. And to be perfectly honest, this week has been probably one of the closest when it comes to my favourite figures of the week. I think you could throw a blanket probably over the top nine of these. So they're, yeah, they're all really good and of a similar high quality. And yeah, I, I really like them all. So a great week to be a 28mm scale historical war gamer. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the roundup, and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, you can always catch more of my news, views, and interviews on the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. Go to the links at the end of the show, or download it from iTunes. I'll be back next week with another Top 10. Until then, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.